Some of you have noticed I've been hanging out in the local tattoo shop an awful lot lately, and I got this incredible idea to create this awesome workshop apron from the guys at Sink and Swim Tattoo in Grover Beach. Thank you, they're making these incredible aprons out of leather that they can work in and keep all the inks off of their clothing while they're performing their art form. And today, doing my art form, I'm gonna teach you how to make this awesome workshop apron. Let's get started. So for this awesome custom workshop apron, I'm using the James Thompson fabric. It's a nine ounce duck and it's a really nice light sewable uh, kind of a canvas and it's working great on the apron itself. And I also use some D rings and some adjustable uh, two inch slide rings. Um, you could always make your straps tieable. I wanted it to be adjustable. I'm gonna teach you how to make it adjustable today. And then also if you'll just bounce below into the description, we've got a link for you where we actually have uh, a template a PDF where you can print it out and I want you to go ahead and get all of your parts and pieces ready for your apron and your strapping and your trim before we start making anything. So I'm going to take a step back and we're going to use a yard and a quarter of that 60 inch wide. I'm just going to call it canvas from here on out. Okay. You're going to need to make four strips two and a half inches wide by the 60 long. So you're going to cut all of those two and a half inch wide strips first. Then, printing out your pattern, you'll be able to tape the pages together if you like, and then go ahead and on the fold, you'll go ahead and start to cut out the pieces, including this little spot down below, and that is actually the separation in the legs, as you can see on the fabric that's already been cut, and that allows me to keep my apron over my pants or my shorts while I'm working because I do a lot of sewing machine repair and so I've got oils and cleaners that I'm working around and I really don't want to get anything on my pants as well as on my shirt. So that's the benefit of the workshop apron is it goes nice and long and it's got the split in the legs so it travels with you very comfortably that way. So after you have those two and a half inch strips cut, you'll also want to make your apron blank. So I've cut this out and I've done a little bit of the work for you because we've got lots of steps. So some of them I've done and I'm going to walk you through. Some of them I'm going to sew you through as well. We're going to start by making our straps into what I'm going to refer to as either trim or strapping from here. Okay. So you're going to take your two and a half inch strips. You'll need to take one of them and join it together. So in order to do that, we want to do it on the bias so there's no big thick lump that comes in through our ties and things back in here. So this is part of what we're making right now. And in order to do a bias um, seam, if you haven't done it before, you'll notice my fabrics are laying perpendicular and I've drawn a line that I'm going to stitch on from the upper corner here down to the lower corner. And then that way when that stitches, this will fold just like that and it'll be on the bias and very easy to work with. So you'll do that to two of your two and a half inch strips. Okay. The other two, we're going to just go ahead and prepare for, um, let's talk about making our trim pieces first. Okay. So follow me to the ironing board for our trim pieces. This is a two and a half inch strip. I've just cut it down so it fits on the board nicely. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to fold over one of the edges by about a quarter of an inch and you're just going to come through and you're going to press that down. We're trying to make this so we have no raw edges. I prepped out another piece and you can see here on this piece, I've actually gone ahead and set it so that I have both edges down and I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. What we're basically doing is trying to create it so we have no raw edges. So then our next step is going to be to go ahead and fold and I, what I'm actually doing is I'm joining and matching up that outer edge like yay. This will be roughly an inch wide when it's done and for both the trim or the strapping you're going to go this far with all four of those strips that were the 60 inches by two and a half. Yes, two of them are joined together so they're 120. I know that. Now this is considered trim at this point. We're going to be able to put this on two places like this on the apron and trim out the raw edge of the apron so we won't have to hem that. But in order to create it called strapping, and I know you won't be able to see my stitches very well on here, but what I did is I stitched right on the edge with my black thread to finish off that area here. And then I also went on the other side just to make it look cool and stitched along the outer side there. Now, I know with my cool white logo, it would have been awesome if I used white thread across the entire apron so that you can see all the stitching, but I really want it to be dark. So that's what I did. Of course, you can use whatever the color thread you wanted. Your trim, 
and your strapping pieces are all made, you cut out your blank for your apron, it's time to get started on those legs. So for working on the leg straps, of course you need to have your apron blank already pre-cut. We're gonna be working down below. I have taken some of my strapping itself. I have two pieces that are cut at two and a half inches long. You can make it a little longer if you wanted. I have one of the D-rings and one of the uh, little lobster claw clips. I also have another piece of that uh, strapping that's roughly 36 inches long. And what I did when I made my first apron is I basically took that piece of strapping and cut it down to about 18 inches or two parts that are 18 inches because that's gonna go around the back of my leg. If you look closely here at the strap, this part right in here is the inside, the split between the two legs. And our long strap is gonna be stitched to this. We'll install this hardware later. And then on this outside strap, we're gonna catch that little two and a half inch piece with the D-ring and we're gonna catch it in the hem. And I'm gonna walk you through both of those. But first, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna mark from our bottom edge here up eight inches, basically four times, two for each leg split, okay? Then our strapping, the way it works, we're gonna take one of those 18 inch pieces and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to pin it so that I can baste stitch it right on the edge of this split of the leg there. Okay, so we're gonna go to the machine with that real quickly and easily. We need to get that in so we can put that trim piece in. A couple back stitches, but we're gonna catch it one more time. Okay, so now that's in there and I can go ahead and remove that part. Like I said, we'll install a hardware in just a few moments. Now what we need to do is we need to trim out this inner split or technically the crotch of the apron and you're gonna need about a 24 inch piece of the trim, right? So it's the open part. And what we're gonna do is I like to start down on the edge with a quick little fold under and grab. And you know what, if that seems a little cumbersome to you, we are gonna be hemming the bottom hem of the apron too. So you can certainly just do a single layer and come here. And as a matter of fact, I'm thinking it through right now and I'm just gonna recommend that for you. Okay, now I'm gonna bring this over here. I'm gonna lay my needle right on the edge and I'm gonna catch, <laughs> going backwards, I'm gonna catch both layers of the trim piece and the apron all in one stitch. So basically just like I'm catching it through some bias tape and all I need to do is get a really good start and then I can massage the rest of it as I go. So I'm gonna take a couple stitches, I'm gonna drop my needle down so it holds and then I can come back in here and I can organize and I'm just gonna sew up to that top portion and then back down the other leg. found it was easiest to work up to the top point. I stop about an inch back. I'm putting a real hard pinch on here and I'm just gonna kinda let it do what it needs to do. One of the benefits of sewing the black thread on the black fabric is if for anything we were to miss, we can always flip our apron over and stitch it again from the other side, catching now effectively both sides of that trim. And of course you're paying attention to what's happening with your strapping piece as you come around. This is the most cumbersome section of the entire project and it's actually quite easy. So don't stress out, just take it nice and slow. You've got a lot of thickness in here. So don't push or pull. That's a great way to snap a needle. Okay, and then of course you're just watching that leg trim. Make sure you've got it just as you want it. little back stitch, I cut my thread, I'm immediately gonna come out of here and I'm just gonna trim that off with my scissors and we'll catch it in the hem later like we just decided to do on demand today, okay? And now I'm gonna flip this over and get ready to show you how to do that D-ring on the other side. So you've got your D-ring, we're gonna go ahead and put it on the other side. So you're gonna slip it into that two and a half inch strip. The raw edges are gonna be caught in this hem on the outside. So kind of with everything in my hand at once, I'm gonna fold under just the apron and then I'm going to catch that right below that eight inch mark we did here 
And before I go to the sewing machine, I'm going to set one pin through it as much as I can to hold things in place. And with that double fold, I'm just going to start at the bottom and stitch that whole hem up. And after I stitched that hem, I also went up to this top neckline, this line right here, and I actually folded down twice so that I could create what looked like trim, but it was just a simple um, hem for the neck. And I actually stitched twice anytime I used it to make it look like trim. So this is just in the apron top folded down. So you'll do all of that before you can set in the side seams like this. See, wasn't that easy? Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do each side trim at a time so we can make our neck portion adjustable. So of those pieces that you had of the trim, we need one that's roughly 50 inches long and another one that is roughly, to, <laughs> roughly 90 inches long. And of course, that's gonna be based on how big or small you are. I am average, we'll just leave it at that. We're starting with our 50 inch trim and I'm purposely starting with one of my selvage edges so I don't have to double fold. And the reason that is gonna be, what I wanna do is I'm gonna come around and we're gonna actually catch this D-ring portion or my rectangular ring portion up here. So the way this is gonna go is I'm gonna inset because that's what makes it a trim, as I showed earlier on that inner leg seam. I'm gonna come up about two inches, and then we're gonna be able to fold this down and under just like this as we go, okay? So my first start seam is actually gonna be right here. As I come in, I like to get my chores done so I can play for the rest of the weekend. So I'm gonna do the hardest stitch first. And again, it's not hard, it's just cumbersome and it would not have killed me to use a straight pin here a moment ago. So I'm just gonna get everything nice and organized on the trim, like I did on the leg seam. First, then I'm gonna bring this out of the way here, back and over. Perfect, oh, I love that. And all I have to do is catch that, drop that presser foot, Take a couple of stitches and now I'm on to the easy trim and what we're going to do is we're going to trim this all the way through this arm seam and then it becomes strapping. It actually becomes the back strap. Okay, I should have pointed out to make sure you were folding your hardware to the back side of your apron. And that's why having that neck seam already established is nice. Plus you just caught it in your trim too. Okay, now I'm coming to the point where my trim is going to start to become strapping. So I come right off. And now I'm stitching it closed, just like when I was creating that one piece of strapping we did at the beginning. And the other thing I'll point out while I'm sewing is we're gonna use our strapping on the apron long. Same with the leg straps. We do all of our adjusting and custom fitting once it's all built. So I'm gonna show you at the very end how to put that hardware on. And I'm also on the leg strap. And I'll also encourage you to tie this on a few times and adjust before you finish the end of your strapping. So that next side is done here with our D-ring holder there, our rectangular ring. Now, the other thing we're gonna do, because remember, we're trying to make it all look consistent, is I'll come back out to this outer edge and I'll also stitch one more time to make it look like it is our strapping pieces. But I won't do that on your time. I'm gonna get ready to go ahead and put in the adjustment part. And that was with that 90 inch piece of trim. Now, there's a special thing that I've done. I've measured down again from one of my selvages, 30 inches and I've made a mark. Now you're gonna need roughly 30 inches to go up and around your neck and make that adjustment. So that mark actually is going to start for us today right here, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna slide my apron into my trim, take that pin back and hold it into place. 
If this slips around a half an inch or an inch or whatnot, it's not gonna be the end of the day, but I really wanna secure that because now what we're gonna do, just to make life easy, is we're gonna sew this as into our strapping, right, by stitching down this edge, and then I'm gonna come all the way down to trim it, all the way out that seam like I just showed you. I'm gonna bring you back to show you how to put the hardware on. I'll be right back. After I finish the 50 inch side on my right side, I've also put in the 90 inch piece of strapping and trim on the left side. The only difference was I left a 30 inch tail that becomes my adjustable neck piece. And then I put it in just like I did and we finished out both sides so that we can teach you how to now put on the adjustable hardware. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna eventually sew this little tail to this center piece. But what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and weave it up and over and down. Of course, you want to make sure your strapping doesn't have any twists in it. Then this is going to go through the rectangle, back over, and all I'm going to have to do is stitch this to the center ring. But what I found as a trip is I would pull out that excess. You probably can't see, and I know that the black on black is tough, but I really like the black apron, so I promise next time to use lighter fabrics. I don't think about it until I'm sitting here looking at it on the, on the camera and I can't see it real well either. I know, I apologize. We're going to go ahead and just stitch right across there. I know it looks like a mess. I'll show you here in a second. And then I'll talk you through our pockets. And we are all set with our awesome apron for the day. So I'm just going to do one set of stitching here. And back. And then this will all lay nice for us in here. I'm going to pull this down tight and now we have our wonderful adjustable hardware just like that so that you can make it whatever size neck that you need. Okay, and then also on those pattern pages, I have some really cool front pockets and I've got my chest pocket. The chest pocket is a simple rectangle that's included in the pattern. The way I handled it, I made a mark. It's about seven inches down from the top. Okay, and this is how I handled this. I took my rectangle, as you see it, and then I folded in the sides, double fold so that I have no raw edges, folded down the top, double fold so I have no raw edges, made a beautiful rectangle. And the trick for this was, so I'd have a little bit of loft, I took the rectangular pocket and I set it so that it would be actually right sides together and I pointed it downward. I stitched across where that chalk line was gonna be. Then I was able to fold it up and top stitch the edges very simply. The hand and side pockets we have for you are a little bit different. They're a fun shape and they were cut from some of that leftover. And I did, I finished the edges as well before I top stitched them down to the apron and I put them where they fit on my body. The only thing that was a little tricky was when I was coming around this arc and double folding it, I just basically, what I did is I used my fingers and I just folded and folded starting on that square edge. And as I began stitching, I just kept twisting the fabric, twisting the fabric, rolling it over to finish out that edge as well. And it finished out very nicely. And then I was able to position them right on my hips so I could comfortably keep, and they're nice and big, so I could keep like my cell phone or keys or whatever I needed while I'm working in there in my workshop in my awesome new apron. And of course, this rectangular pocket is a great place for you to do your embellishing and enjoy the benefits of your embroidery machine if you have one. So that is our awesome workshop apron. Now you've got one, you can go out into your shop, get dirty while I'm making great new projects here at Man Sewing. Mm -hmm.